Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Google Analytics and how you can set up Google Analytics uh, to work with your own website and start tracking uh, how people are using your website, how they're finding your website, and a lot of different concepts along those lines. So uh, the first thing to do is create your Google Analytics account. I'm actually connected in an account I normally don't use just because it's, uh, my other account already has it set up. Once you get to the sign up page, you'll be asked to give uh, your account name, right? Uh, so I can call this, for instance, um, MBA 590 Digital Marketing, right? Um, and then you need to give it your um, a website name, right? So uh, this we'll call this the Digital Marketing Research website, right? So in this case, I'm just going to use the Wix website we set up earlier in this class. So if I go over to Wix, right, I have the website right here that I can use. There's the URL, billrand.wixsite.com slash MBA 590. I just paste it in there. You have to set a reporting time zone. We obviously probably want it on the Eastern time since that's where we are. Um, and then you can talk about which um, accounts you're sharing. Then once you hit the get account button, you have to accept the terms of service. But after that, it's just a matter of actually getting what's called the tracking ID. And this tracking ID number is the most important piece of information Google Analytics will give you. As long as you have that code, um, you can essentially track any page on any website if you can embed code into that website, right? Um, so um, they actually have the code right here, right? talking about it and so this is the code you need to use now if you're building your own website from scratch they actually give you the javascript to embed in the website itself so once i have this code i can go back to wix just copy and paste the code so I copy the code without copying tracking id and i can go back to wix and i can go to manage it at the site and if you look on the left hand side down here there's something called tracking and analytics right and then i can I, I can't do it right now because of the fact I haven't upgraded, I haven't paid the money, but then I would normally just be able to paste the code in. And as soon as I do that, Google will start tracking uh, all the hits to the website, right? Um, so um, if I want, and this also works with other things like on Google, if you have a Google Sites site, there's a place where you can paste that code in. If you have a WordPress site, right, there's a way that's hosted by wordpress.com, you can paste that code in. So all these different ways you can hook up your website to Google Analytics, right? Okay, I'm gonna switch accounts because this account, the account I'm using to start this up doesn't have much data in it yet. And I'm gonna switch it to my other main account, which actually I have been tracking using Google Analytics for a while, so I can show you off the reporting functions. Uh, but this is how you get started setting up the code. Okay, thanks. Okay, so now I'm logged into my other account, which actually tracks my uh, personal website, billran.org. Um, and I, I don't get a lot of traffic, right? It's just a personal academic web page. I don't really try and drive much to it, but you can kind of see what kind of stats I'll get, right? Um, so the main uh, page when you come in just shows your user traffic, how many users you've seen recently uh, over the last few days um, and compares it to the few days before that. So um, this is looking at, it looks like it's looking at um, a week ago, right? At every comparison point for the last five days, right? Um, so, you know, right now I'm seeing, you know, 12 users over the whole time across 13 sessions, which means only one person's a returning user. Um, I'm seeing a bounce rate, meaning they come to the website and leave immediately about 23%. And that the session duration on average is one minute and six seconds, right? Um, don't have any active users now. If you had active users, then you could actually see what they were currently tra looking at. If you scroll down a little bit, you can see how do you acquire your channel, your, your traffic. Um, it looks like most of mine is organic search, like people looking for me with a little bit of direct search as well. Um, and this guy kind of shows the same thing essentially. Um, and this would show you any websites that point to your website, but as I said, there's not a lot for me, so that doesn't uh, show up too much. Uh, you can also get users by time of day. When are they most likely to visit your website? Uh, I seem to have a weird peak at between four and five in the morning uh, on Mondays, right? Uh, but it, you know, there's not a lot of data points there. You know, I can also see where people are coming from. And in my case, they're coming from the U.S., Brazil, or the Netherlands a little bit. So, um, and what are the top devices? What devices are they using? What pages are they going to? Um, how are your active users trending over time, right? Looking at monthly, weekly, and daily information. 
Um, how well do you retain users, right? Like if a user comes in March 4th, how likely are they to show up two weeks later, right? Um, and you can set up goals. And I, I actually have set up one goal just to kind of show you a little bit about how you do that. So my goal is uh, very similar. Uh, it's um, actually a funnel type goal, right? So I want people to download a page, paper, right? So what a funnel goal does is it says, I'm gonna set up some step points that they wanna hit along the way, and each of those step points um, track how many people are there so I can figure out where people are falling off, right? So right now, you know, how many people visit my main page? Well, 13 in the, in the time since that we're looking at right now. Um, oh, sorry, move forward once accidentally. Um, and then how many people went to the research page? And none did in this time period. And then from there, I have a journal papers page, how many people they go there, and how many people actually downloaded the paper I was looking at, right? So right now, you can see that people aren't finding the research page. So this would kind of give you some evidence that maybe I should highlight that more, right? Maybe I should make that part of the front page material talking about going to my research page uh, and potentially downloading a paper, right? Uh, and this shows you where they went, right? So a lot of people actually went to um, my, bio my biography or the CV or something else along those lines, right? Um, so this is how you can kind of start to set up funnels to track where people are going. Now this is for the, on all of these tables, what you're being shown is uh, the, the time period that's set at the top. So in this case, it's April 11 to April 2017, 2018. You can also set up a comparison if you want, right? Um, but let's say I want to look at like the whole year, right? I can change this to April 18th, 2017 to April 2017, 2018, right? And this will process all the data and you can see that actually over the whole period, all people do make it to my research page, but no people downloaded the exact paper that I had tagged here for them to download, right? Uh, so that's kind of um, interesting and it gives you a little more insight as to what's going on, right? Now let's talk about all the data you got here. So we talked a little bit, we mentioned briefly real time. So real time, provides you with insights into what people are doing right now. And since my site's not too active, no one's there, right? The audience heading is great. It provides you with information about who your audience actually is, right? And so it starts by just showing graphs of, of frequency of visitors, but then you can get into things like the language, you can look at the country they're coming from, what uh, city they come from, right? What browser they use, what operating system they use, um, and who their service provider is, right? Um, and then if it's a mobile connection, you can look at the operating system again, service provider, and even the screen resolution, which gives you an idea of how to best design your offerings to make it fit that space, right? Of course, all this data can also be exported out, right? And so you can grab it and then use whatever you else you want to look at. It. Um, let's uh, look a little bit more. Actually, I want to click at demographics. So, um, the demographics, right, um, allows you to see kind of in detail who Google thinks these people are, right? So it turns out most of my users are in the 25 to 34 category with some in the 18 to 24, some in the 35 to 44. It's about 54% male and 45% female. And a lot of people seem to be interested in sports, um, individual sports, running, walking, as well as consumer electronics. Um, and food and drinks and travel, right? And so these are all uh, different things that maybe that, you know, because I have this linked in my Strava profiles and stuff like that, people are finding me through those ways, right? Um, of course, the interest category kind of breaks this, is kind of gives you some of the same information um, as to what's uh, kind of interesting there. You can enable more comprehensive uh, by enabling advertising features on your space. Um, you can look at, we talked a little bit about geography in the, in the overview, but you can also break it down by geography. So of the, the, the German speakers out there, um, how many users do I have? How many are new? What is their bounce rate, right? Uh, and what, how many pages a session, right? And actually, interesting enough here, right? It looks like the, I think this is um, Chinese, actually, um, are some of the, the, the most uh, uh, frequent users, they spend the most time on my website, right? Um, so that's kind of an, an interesting way to break down by who is actually spending time where, because they spend almost three minutes on my website. Right? Um, 
you can also look at behavior, right? So are these new, do new users have a different behavior than returning users, right? Um, do, how, how many, how often do they visit your website, right? Um, uh, and you see some of you, a lot of users only visit my website once, but there's a few users who have been there many, many times, right? Um, then you could start to look more at breaking down behavior by browser and OS. You could start to look more at breaking down behavior by mobile platform, right? Or mobile device, desktop, mobile, tablet. Um, and all this kind of gives you additional information. Now let's talk about the next, so that's all just taking look at the audience tab, right? And looking at what that gives you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about acquisition. So acquisition is how do people find your website? And you can see from my setup, right, that the vast majority of people find my website either through social media, right, or through organic search, right? Um, with direct typing, they just type in, and that's probably me, honestly, given the numbers, uh, of, of, of they just directly type in buildrand.org. Now for each of these categories, you can get a little bit more breakdown. So if I click on social, for instance, a lot of people come to me through LinkedIn, uh, the fair number through Twitter, and a moderate number through Facebook, right? Uh, with almost no one coming to me from Instagram or Pinboard, right? I didn't even know I had a Pinboard account to link here. Um, so that's kind of a, 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 an interesting breakdown, right? Uh, if you go back to the overview on channels, right? Um, I can, for instance, click on organic search. now. I um, I don't have this set up very well right now because of the fact that I have some redirects going on and things like that that are screwing up the results. Uh, but normally what you would see is for all 121 users who typed in um, the some keyword, they would present the keyword that they use to find your website, right? Um, and now actually it turns out there's something that Google does called Google Search Console that's almost, if anything, better at solving this particular problem, right? Uh, but this does give you some insight into what people are doing. And then you can look at AdWords, so here's Search Console, right? Uh, to make analytics and Search Console work together, by the way, you do have to have, um, uh, you do have to link the accounts, and I'll show you how to do that shortly. Um, so this shows what page uh, people are landing on when they get to my uh, website through organic search, right? Um, a little bit of the countries and additional information along those lines. Uh, so at audience, acquisition, next step down is behavior. This shows you what they're actually doing once they get to the website, right? So the vast majority of my users start on my main page. Uh, they maybe, they, a lot of them drop off. I have a 57% bounce rate. Um, the highest next likely step is to the bio with the CV being a, a pretty close beyond it, right? Um, and so this kind of shows you where they had along the way. Uh, and then you can look to see what content is the most popular on your website. So my main page is by far the most popular with my CV and my bio being behind it, right? Um, you can look at things like how fast it takes the various pages on your website to load in different browsers so that you can get an idea of whether certain things need to be optimized better. Um, and if you had um, site search set up, right, which is like a search box that Google was maintaining analytics on, you could also get information about that. So I kind of jumped ahead and at the very beginning talked about behavior, conversions, right? Uh, but you saw the funnel visualization, that's obviously something you can set up and then go through looking at how they, they work on that. So that's a brief overview of Google Analytics. I hope it's been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns about this, please let me know. Thanks.